Fucking right, alright, and we say hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Fucking right, fucking right, alright. Uh, so much for being optimistic. They say love is in the air. <clears throat> okay, guys, everybody here has been to some kind of boot camp, so I'll talk to you informally. Um, well, here's where it's at, okay? For some reason, we've been taught to give a shit about what people say that, that don't matter. The people who don't matter. Okay, it's like a, it's like a society... Hey, you've got a text message. It's like a society of people who are seeking the approval of critics. We have movie critics who don't know how to act. We have art critics who don't know how to draw. We have um, Yelp. <laughs> Fuck Yelp. We have Yelp, which anybody who's disgruntled can go over there and write books and books about somebody they don't like. And people, instead of going and observing for themselves what a situation is, what they'll do first is they'll go online and see what everybody else says about it, which is one of the most pathetic things you could ever do, right? Like, let's say I want to know about you. Let me find out what people say about you first so I can color my perception completely. Then I'm going to show up and see if it's congruent with what I see. But don't you think your perception is colored if you, you're about to go see somebody and you hear what other people have to say about it, right? Who's that? Hey, man. Look great. Go on. So, you could have, you know, if we're talking about the pickup arts or the seduction arts, you could have 9, 10, 15 girls liking you, and you could have this one fucking girl upset with you or disapproving of you. And what are you probably going to do, worry about that one bitch who's upsetting you, and forget the other 9 or 10 who are, like, ready to go talk to you. Girls do the same shit, right? They have all kinds of guys, and then it's the one guy who doesn't approve of her that she's fucking determined to get his fucking respect because he holds the cards to her life, right? But I think this is an upside-down view of life if you want to be happy, which is what I'm interested in. Um, so, one of my friends who owns a business put on Facebook yesterday. This is where this whole thing comes from. Put on Facebook yesterday, hey, we have this person show up to our business. He owns a business, so he's writing on his Facebook. He says, we have this person show up to our business and... She was real disgruntled. She's not even a customer. She went and put a bad review on Yelp, and we went from five stars to four stars. So if you guys, you know, haven't yelped about us, Yelp. So I saw him today. I said, hey, brother. There's probably books written about me on how, what a piece of shit I am on Yelp. Like chapter four, Arash is an asshole. <laughs> chapter seven, he's a perfect. Chapter 14, whatever, right? And I said, look, dude. Your business is not for the person who's a critic. Your business is for the people who pay you and who see value in you. You service them. You talk to them. And you care about their views. But not a critic who knows nothing about you, who's going to stand on the edges and talk about you, which is what people do. You probably have people in your life who see some value in you. And you're probably ditching them for other people who are trying to get their approval. This is a fucking mistake. Okay? It's a big mistake. Because you're leaking your energy towards somebody who is only interested in judging you from a point of view that is not even accurate according to you. So you feel like, well, you know, she never really understood me. I have to go back and let her know. Okay? Well, if you are unclear in your communication, all right, then you clear it up. But if you are very clear in your communication and she's still not getting it, that's her issue. Yeah. I can't answer that right now. Hey, beautiful. You've got a text message. I do have to answer that, but let's do it in a second. So, um, anyways. Because we live in a society that's designed to go and convert people. It's like this weird thing, right? Every religion is trying to convert everybody else. Save everybody else's fucking soul. What about your own goddamn soul? You know what I mean? Why are you so fucking worried about everybody else? 
Wouldn't it make sense that you want your enemies to burn in hell? Like, I would not want to convert my enemies. If I was really going to heaven, I would be like, stay Muslim, okay? Or stay Christian. <laughs> or stay whatever the fuck you are, because that's for sure damnation. <laughs> Why do I have to have this, this weird feeling that everybody has to believe whatever the fuck I believe? Shouldn't there be some variety? Right? Shouldn't there be some difference in opinion that makes life better? I think so. Now, you don't have to have a uh, this reaction of arguing with everybody. Right? I think that blah, blah, blah. Oh, let me, let me just bring, throw this out while we're at it. Okay? Um, I was uh, talking to one of my students today, and we kind of got into it slightly. Not really got into it, but like, you know, we had an argument about it, which I thought was pleasing. I was ready to hear his side. And... For a moment, it looked like I was a male chauvinist, okay, uh, and, I, and I could feel it, as if I'm a male chauvinist, right? And then I realized that the definition or the term, what's up? The definition or the term male chauvinist is, there's a chair there, okay, is created by a feminist movement, okay? Let, let's get that straight for a second. Prior to there being feminism as a movement, there's no title of male chauvinist. Then somebody steps up and says, we are feminists. You are a male chauvinist. And then, and then you have to defend your view suddenly. What? Because somebody la labeled you. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just throwing that out because that, that movement, it may or may not empower women. I'm willing to debate with the head feminist woman movement. Okay, and I'll show her how she's making herself weak and everybody else. But that's not the point. I'm talking to men here. And I know you're a lady. Uh, uh, I'm talking to men here. And that movement does make men weaker. Now, it's also true that the women that I know, that are the nines and tens of this world, are constantly complaining that the men they see are weak. They're not real men. Well, bitch, how can I be a real fucking man? If I can't be a real fucking man, because to be a real fucking man, I'm a male chauvinist pig. So I have to be kind of feminine. I can't really express myself. I can't really fucking have my balls to myself. That's yeah, that's fine. These pauses are good. Because I like them. Here we go. Come in. Oh, it's open. Normally it's not open. You look pretty. Thanks. I'm just going to school. That's how you go to school? Yeah. What school is that? Go <laughs> <laughs> okay, or whatever. Sorry. Sorry. Sneak through. So that's one of the major complaints, okay? But anyway, let's get back on track. The track being that we have this weird disease, right? You break down the word disease to dis-ease. You break down the word... We have a dis-ease in us in trying to... Um, in trying to appease the person who's critical of us. As if that's going to handle our dis-ease. Yet, they are the source of the dis-ease. So you just do that to them. You just get rid of them. That's it. It's a new way of looking at it. Why are you so hell-bent on converting everybody to your fucking view? There's a billion people out there. It's your job to put your view out there as I'm doing. The right people will catch it. The wrong people will criticize it. But who gives a shit? Today is the 13th year anniversary of my business, IMC Academy. 13 years, during a time when economy's bad and blah, 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 yet my stats are higher than they've ever been, ever. Economy didn't even touch me. And I have people in droves out there who talk shit about me. He met one of the girls today. I don't like that stupid little cunt. I don't like that um, midget bitch. She's a disgusting whore. I hope she dies. I will lose nothing if that bitch dies. I hope she dies fast. I hope I hear about it. I will piss on her funeral. <laughs> right? It's funny to you because you wish you could say it probably. <laughs> Why should I have any liking or compassion for a dumb, stupid bitch who's been out there for a year or so trying to disrepute me and what I do? I'm glad she walked into this place. I was like, wow, you know, Raj, I agree with some of his stuff, but not everything. Bitch, nobody cares, because I'm still making more money than you. I have more power than you. I'll still be fucking you and your friends if I want, so go fucking die. Okay? A painful, slow, torturous death. 
and let me videotape and play for my own pleasure. And maybe I'll change my mind when it happens. But as of right now, that's how I feel about it. So we seem to want, okay, maybe I would want her approval because she doesn't approve of me. But the problem is, if I spend the last 13 years trying to appease every bitch or every dude, the fucking douchebag that left my academy and was out there going, well, you know, rush, and I was like, wait a second, why are you saying that? Come here, let's talk about it. Let me take you to lunch. Well, you see, the reason why I was saying that is because, and I went, spend my energy doing that while I have people that tell me daily that I'm changing their lives, that they're better, that they're sexier, stronger, but I have a choice to make. I'll spend my time with the people who are benefiting. They're getting it. They're getting what I'm doing. And if I give them a little bit, they'll shine. <laughs> Whereas the other asshole, I have to keep and 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 then he wants to fucking argue and then back and then he wants to go research uh, and come back and see, you see, what about this? Why are you so fucking worried about it? Why am I such a fucking threat to you? Because I say the word cunt or bitch or ass. I'm sorry if you haven't grown up and you can't use words yet. I'm sorry if you have some weird obligation that your enemy should survive and live better than you. I'm sorry that you feel like your girlfriend or wife or mom or church owns your balls and dick. None of them owns mine. I'm very clear about that subject. I don't have a fucking problem saying that to anybody. So the, the main gist of this talk is for you to take a clear look in your life. Whatever you're doing, you know, that is definitely beyond game, everything we're teaching now. Why are you so worried about the critic? You have so many people around you, and, and you might not. You might be like, well, you know, I really don't have anybody who supports me. Well, then you're not communicating. Simple.